All right, I think we're live here. Looks like uh, Jake Bennett's on, Mel. Um, a lot of people asked last week about my puppy, our puppy that we got. So this is Huey, our little Vishla puppy. He is 10 and a half weeks old. He's a feisty little guy this morning though. Yes. He might not last. Yeah. Oh, oh he hey. wants to go. Hey. Hey, well, he's going away now. Can you say bye? <laughs> say bye. Thanks. Can you shut the door, please? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, glad to see you here on Facebook Live. Um, is Instagram not working? There we go. Sorry about that. All right, glad you can see me now. And that uh, glare from the sun makes me look really pasty. So, sorry about that. Um, good to see you all uh, this morning. My name is Jordan, and I will be doing our devotional on CF Goes Live this morning. Um, if We'll start off with a question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Austin says the natural light. Yeah, natural light looks good, right? I decided to do the Devo this morning in our apartment. We have a one-bedroom apartment, and so I'm currently uh, in our bedroom on a uh, card table because... We don't have an office area, so this is the best I could do. Um, but you got those of you who joined on right away got a quick glimpse of our little puppy Huey. He's a cute little guy. Um, but yeah, so we'll start off with a question this morning. What is your favorite movie series? Your favorite movie series? Is it like X Men, The Avengers, you know, Mission Impossible? Maybe maybe you're a Rocky fan. I don't know. Uh, Star Wars, what is your favorite movie series? Comment um, on the video now, your favorite movie series. So, <clears throat> mine, I'm gonna disclose that information here in a little bit, but um, yeah, leave some comments so I can see. Uh, Jake Van Sickle says, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Jack Walter says, Lord of the Rings. You're, you're, uh, you're stealing my thunder here. <laughs> What is your favorite movie series? So, uh, my sister uh, says Harry Potter. My dad, who's logged on right now, says Star Wars. Um, let's see, Brian says, I'm a big Disney Pixar fan, especially the Toy Story series. That's a good one, that's a good one. Uh, Sarah Camargo, Back to the Future. That's a good one too. Man, that's a classic. Sarah, were you even around when those came out? Uh, sorry. All right. <clears throat> uh, Kung Fu Panda. That's awesome. That's a good one. That was really funny. Uh, my favorite part of that movie is when he grabs the guy's hand and poof, and then everything just poof. The same move, you know? It's a good movie. It's a funny one. All right. Anyone else? Your favorite movie series. Favorite movie series. Maybe some of you don't like movies. I don't know. You can comment your favorite book series then if you want. Jake says they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <clears throat> All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be doing our devotional this morning on the spiritual discipline of fellowship. And so some of you are probably might be thinking, fellowship? I didn't know that was a spiritual discipline. I didn't realize that it was. Well, just like all the other disciplines, uh, there are things in our lives that we ought to, to work on, to work towards um, in our walk with Christ. And act fellowship, actually, like Christian fellowship does require some effort, some work in our lives. And so, um, Kate, Caitlin Brem, Keek says uh, Harry Potter. That's a good one. But And so, um, disciplines don't ne necessarily come natural. So, the desire to like be intertwined with other Christians, I think is a desire that we ought to have, but sometimes uh, it doesn't just come naturally. Actually, a lot of times our, our flesh, our sin can get in the way. And so this morning we're going to spend the next 15, 20 minutes or so 
talking about the spiritual discipline of fellowship. And so I've got three kind of main things that we're going to talk about. Uh, what is fellowship? I think that, that'd be a helpful basis for us to understand. Uh, two, why fellowship? Why should we? And three is how to fellowship. And guys, we only have 15 minutes here, so um, I think that we could talk about this for a long time. But this is a devotional. I want to just give you a few things to think about, to chew on as you uh, spend your time in God's Word today, as you have your own uh, time after this. And so, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. And for those of you who didn't hear, the uh, we're doing a devotional on the spiritual discipline of fellowship. And the question this morning is, what is your favorite movie series? And so the first question that I'm going to answer is, what is fellowship? Now, uh, if someone came up to you and asked you, uh, could you give a definition of Christian fellowship? Do you think that you could answer them? You know, is it spending time together? Is it pizza parties and icebreakers? You know, is it Friday night hangouts? You know, I, I think it's, it's much more than sharing your love for fancy coffee. Those of you who are the coffee snobs out there, I know who you are. Uh, I'm a Folgers guy. I could drink whatever kind of coffee and I feel satisfied. So, <laughs> um, but the word fellowship, I think, is thrown around a lot, especially since our campus ministry is called campus fellowship. And so do we actually know what Christian fellowship is? And it's okay if you don't. It's, a, it's okay if you can't uh, give a de definition of it. And that's why we're here this morning to talk through this. And so the first example of fellowship that we see in the New Testament is in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verses 42. So if you have a notebook or you have your Bible, you feel free to open that. We're going to talk about a few passages this morning. Feel free to write some notes down, take some notes. Uh, it might be helpful in your, your uh, devotional time after this. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, right before this, thousands of people are coming to Christ, like, thousands, like over 3,000 people. So Peter's teaching in the colonnade and both Jew and Gentile are hearing him speak and they receive Christ. Uh, they, they're Christians and they're all coming together in unity, unity and fellowship. And this is what it says in Acts chapter two. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Okay. So they devoted themselves to the teaching to fellowship, they devoted themselves to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And so that word fellowship, the Greek word for that is koinonia, koinonia. It took me a while to say that right, <laughs> but koinonia, it means association, to have community or communion, a joint partnership, to share one, share with what, what, excuse me, to share which one has in anything and in everything. And so if I was to give my own definition of fellowship, now there, there are a lot, I'm sure there are much wiser people who have studied the word of God much longer, who have a much clearer and better definition. But in my own time, as I was studying God's word, this is the definition that I have that I think is, is just uh, simple, but I think it's true about fellowship. It is a mutual devotion in love through the spirit both to one another and to God. So fellowship um, is a mutual devotion in love through the Spirit to one another and to God. And I don't know about you, but that seems a little bit more than just a casual hangout, devotion to one another. And so when we look at this passage in Acts, we study through the book of Acts and all the New Testament, really. We see the, the epistles that Paul wrote you see that what they had, their mutual, what they held in common was Christ. Their common life or death mission together in his summons to take the gospel to the world in the face of impending persecution. So they held all things in common in Christ, a life or death mission in his summons to take the faith worldwide in the face of an impending persecution. The same call that Christ has given the first church, he has commissioned us to as well. So earlier we were talking about our favorite series and, and the first two people commented Lord of the Rings. Well, that's my favorite as well. I don't think it can be topped. It's so good. 
The books are amazing and the movies are done so well. And I think Tolkien, the author of these books, had it right when he called the Nine the Fellowship of the Ring. It's an all-in, <clears throat> life-or-death collective venture in the face of great evil in an overwhelming opposition. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So I think true fellowship is less like gathering for the Super Bowl and more like training to go to war. You know, I served in the Army Infantry and you know, training was hard. It was brutal a lot of times. But in the end, there was something that I realized as I looked around me, that this wasn't just about me. I, I would look at these guys and I would say, I need you and you need me. This is more than just training. Uh, the picture, the big picture isn't just about me. And it is a life or death situation. I need you and you need me. And I think that the same thing is true of Christian fellowship. It's not just... Um, you know, our, our joy in spending time with one another or, or, or building friendships. That's an important part of fellowship. But this, is, this has to do with people's soul, like their, their maturity, presenting them mature before Christ. Christian fellowship is meant to, to produce something in our hearts, in our lives. It's meant to, to help us walk closer with Christ, to know him. And so that's why we're going to be talking about this discipline this morning. And so I want to be clear though, Super Bowl parties, Friday night hangouts, Bible studies, those are good things. Those are, those are really good things. But my, my hope that is that this will help you see those things through the lens of biblical fellowship, how we ought to approach those things. And so remember, fellowship is a mutual devotion in love through the spirit to one another and to God. And so we're going to be talking about the second point here. So we talked about what is fellowship. The second one is why should we fellowship? Why, why should we uh, gather together? Why should we be intertwined with one another as Christians? And so I remember when I first became a Christian, um, I was at my parents' church, um, and there's this deep longing that I had as soon as I became a Christian to know other believers, to spend time with them, to learn from them. And that was actually my first prayer as a Christian was, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do or what I should pray for, but I know that I need other people to help me. And God answered that prayer. And within a week, I actually ran into my good friend, David Langley. Um, and he, he is a community group leader at Walnut Creek Church. And he invited me into this church family, this church body. And collectively, they looked out for my well-being and for my life. And they taught me how to, to read the word of God, how to, to fellowship with other believers, to be a disciple of Jesus. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Um, I, I just love them so much. And so why should we fellowship? Well, there's three things real quick. We could, there's like a ton of them. There are a bunch of thing, reasons why we should fellowship, but I'm just going to talk about three really quick. One is for our protection. Two is for our encouragement. And three, it's a great tool for evangelism. So why should we fellowship? For our protection, for our encouragement, for evangelism. So the first one is for our protection. So if you have your Bible, you can look at Hebrews 3, chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. Guys, there's a lot of passages that talk about this, um, but this is just one of them, and I, I, it's been really helpful for my life. And so uh, I'm going to share this one with you for our protection. Why fellowship for our protection? So Hebrews 3, 12 through 13 says, Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage each other daily while it's still called today. Why? So that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. Sin is deceiving and it can cause us to turn away from the Lord. To, uh, it can sift and uh, like destroy our faith. And so we need the body. We need to have fellowship with one another that we might encourage each other that we might not turn away, to protect us from the evil one, from the enemy. And what's crazy about this passage is that the charge lands not on the drifting saint to get himself back on the path, but on the others in the community to have enough proximity to him, awareness of him or her, and regularity to really know him or her, to spot the drift and the war that's going on in their life. 
the war that they have against sin, against the flesh. And, and as I'm talking about this, I'm just curious if this is really challenging you in your own life. Do you know people like that in the body of Christ? And are you known like that? Christian fellowship is, ought to be the closest kind of relationship, apart from marriage, I think. Um, but obviously we're, we're Christians or, uh, in marriage, but ought to be the closest kind of relationships that we have in our lives. And we ought to be known and we ought to know people. Do you know your brothers and sisters that well to be able to help them in their time of need? The enemy wants to destroy us. He wants to sift us like wheat and we need each other. So um, Christian fellowship, why fellowship? Well, for our protection, for our protection. The second one is for our encouragement. Another passage in Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. Guys, there are a lot of other passages, again, that talk about this, but this is one that um, I think about often. And it says this, Let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. So he says, encourage each other. So the great thing about this verse is not necessarily the call to spend time together, but the instruction of what to do when we are together. It's to look past our own needs and to look to others, to know each other, to get close, to stay close, to go deep, and to consider particular persons and to interact with them such that you exhort and inspire them to love and to good deeds that specifically fit them in their lives. And so Christian fellowship is a mutual devotion in love. Guys, there are very few things in my life that have encouraged me and blessed me more than a brother or a sister who is looking out for me in my daily walk with Christ. I think there are, I would say several times a week, probably like five times a week, where I'm struggling with something or I'm thinking about something or my thoughts are like deceiving me about my just identity and love for Jesus. And so many people in the church body have been so quick in grace and in love to encourage me and to remind me of gospel truths that cause me to, to look to Christ, to look to the cross. And so we need fellowship for our encouragement. We need it. It's designed that way. Guys, following Christ alone is not God's plan. It is not God's plan. And we see and understand the grace of our Father so much more immensely, I think, when we're intertwined in fellowship with one another. And it takes work, guys. It's hard. And that brings us to our third point, is that it's a great tool for evangelism. So why Christian? Why, why do we fellowship? Well, one, for our protection, two, for our encouragement, and three, it's a great tool for evangelism. So I'm going to look at John 13, verses 34 through 35. And again, we can look at a lot of passages, but for time's sake, I'm only going to talk about this one, okay? It says this, I give you a new command, love one another. Just as I have loved you. So this is Jesus speaking. He says, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. Why, Jesus? Well, he says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So Jesus is saying, they will know that you belong to me by the way that you love one another. Christian fellowship is meant to be different than any other kind of relationship in the world. And I think so many of you here watching this this morning can attest to that. You can attest to that. You can say, when I got plugged into the body of Christ and I see or I saw how they loved one another, how they spent time with one another, how they served one another, how they put the needs of each other before their own needs, I said, there is something different about these people and I want what they have. And what they have is the spirit of God inside of them that causes them to love them and put the other the needs of others before themselves. And so guys, this is one of the greatest tools for evangelism, for the lost world, the unredeemed to see Christ, the love of Christ and what he did on the cross through the servitude and selflessness of our fellowship with one another. 
And so you want to you wanna win people to Christ? Do you want to see people get saved? Well, one of the ways that we do that is by integrating each other so deeply in love, in fellowship, that they see the love of our Savior. That, that, is, that is so true. That's true. So true. Guys, so we need Christian fellowship. Why fellowship? Because of our protection, for our encouragement, and to win the lost. And God has designed it this way. And there are many more reasons, but those are just a few of them. And the third one I'm going to talk about really quick is how to fellowship. How should we spend time with Christians? Well, there's a lot of things in this too, but I'm just going to give you a few just kind of helpful things. And I think most of you know this, but it, uh, hopefully it's just kind of a refresher for you. And so the, uh, this, I, I was reading this and John Piper says this, he says, the healthy Christian introverted or not of whatever temperament in whatever season seeks not to minimize relationships with his fellows in Christ, but to maximize them. And so how should we fellowship? Well, it starts with your heart. Fellowship with one another is because we have fellowship with the Father through the blood of Christ. Guys, we lived a life apart from God in our sin, worthy of hell. And we have been reconciled back to God through Christ, his death on the cross and his resurrection, giving us new life in him. And we have fellowship with him. We can know him. So salvation is to know God. Guys, we know God. We have fellowship with him. And so to have a deep sense of fellowship with other Christians is to have a deep devotion to our Heavenly Father and a love for Him. We've been given the Spirit. You know, you think of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, they have a perfect unity from, <laughs> for all time. And that same Spirit is within us now, and we've been brought near to Him, and we've been brought near to each other. And so, look to the cross, that your heart might be softened, that you see the world with compassion like Jesus did. And that's the first step, I think, in really like learning how to fellowship is like learning to love God. And the second is to pray. Pray for those around you. It is really hard if you're praying for someone, you know, if you're praying for specific people in the body, in fellowship, to not conversate with them. It's almost like this, this burden if you've been praying for them and you, you walk up to them and you're like, why am I not talking to you? You know, it's like it stirs up our affections for one another. And so I would challenge you in your devotion time, in your developing a spiritual discipline for fellowship, pray for specific people in your community. Maybe for the people who are spiritually immature, you know, that they would grow a greater uh, understanding and love for Jesus. Maybe pray for specific uh, hurts or pains or, or hardships that are happening in the community. Pray for the church, you know. This will stir up your affections, your love for one another, and it'll cause you to place the needs of others before yours. Uh, and, and, and it's a mutual devotion, you guys. You'll experience that too. Third, uh, do a study through the book of Acts, you know, through the epistles. You see the early church, you know, read the scriptures. Study how the church's lives, their lives were so interwoven and say, what kinds of things, how can I apply this to my life? How can I walk uh, with other believers as I see that they do in the scriptures? And the, th and the last one is to seek, to know, and to be known by other Christians. Do other people really know the intricacies of your heart and your life? You know, we talked about uh, for our protection, you know, um, that that people ought to be able to spot out our weaknesses and and stir up our affections and point us back to Christ. It's like it's really hard to do that if you don't know each other well, you know, if you don't really know our tendencies, our flaws, our our our, our drawbacks, our hesitations, our our lack of faith in certain areas. It's like when we know each other in that way, we can we can point one another back to the cross, to Christ. So seek to be known and seek to know people in that kind of way. And so um, being a follower of Christ is not putting on a facade. It's not. It's not about 
covering up your sins. <laughs> Guys, Christ paid for those. Um, you're no longer bound or defined by your sin. You are a new creation in Christ, and that allows us to walk in freedom, in fellowship, closely knit with other Christians. And so, and it's one of the ways that we experience and grow a deeper understanding of God's grace. Make plans for good and invite others to join you. And so fellowship is a spiritual discipline. It can be hard. You know, our flesh or our pride can get in the way and hinder us from really walking faithfully with other Christians in the Lord. And so as a discipline, it is meant to help us walk closer with Christ. So the three things again, uh, fellowship it's a mutual devotion in love through the Spirit to one another and to God. Why? For our protection, for our encouragement, and to win the lost. And how? It's to seek a deeper relationship with God, to be prayerful, and to be known. And I hope that this will be an encouragement and a reminder to, uh, for you to engage with the body of Christ. I know it's really hard right now because of the social distancing stuff. But be proactively thinking how you can engage and be prayerful about how you can grow in the discipline of fellowship with your fellow believers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just praise you for your design uh, that we are not meant to walk this world alone, to follow you alone. And I thank you that you've given us a safeguard in other Christians. I thank you for the, the mutual uh, encouragement that they have uh, blessed me with. And Lord, I just pray that we would grow in a greater unity and a greater love and affection for one another and for you. And so I pray that you would use this time, Lord, that you would bless all of the people watching, um, that you would stir up our hearts. And we just love you, Lord. We praise you that you are um, above all things and that you're holy and that your love is faithful and endures forever. We pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Thanks everyone so much for joining. Uh, I'm so encouraged to be able to share this with you. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day and afternoon. And uh, maybe I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.